Zeus, the supreme god, is frequently associated with many goddesses, immortal and mortal women. There are considerable amount of stories in Greek mythology that talks about the association of Zeus with these women and how interesting lineages were born from them, adding series of fascinating stories to Greek mythology. Some legends claim that Eros, the god of love and desire, is hugely responsible for these many romantic relationships of Zeus. Being the king of gods made him an interesting target for the god of love, and so Zeus was a constant victim of Eros' arrows of love. Regardless, Zeus has not only been romantically involved with women, but has also with men. One such story is the love of Zeus for the handsome young prince Ganymede. The Greek gods were known to be not only immortal, but also ageless. This is a gift they received thanks to Hebe, the goddess of youth. She offered the gods a nectar that would help them to maintain their youth and immortality. So Hebe was the cupbearer of the Olympian gods. Being the youngest daughter of Zeus and Hera, she was often portrayed having a domestic life. After being married to Heracles, Hebe stepped down from her role as the cupbearer. But as for some stories, she was dismissed from her role after she accidentally tripped and spilled the nectar all over. Anyway, with Hebe gone, the gods had no one who would serve them the nectar. While Zeus was looking for someone worthy for such a position, he saw the beautiful prince Ganymede. As for most stories, Ganymede was a son of the Trojan king Tros, who was the founder of the Trojan kingdom. All of King Tros' children were flawless, and Ganymede was especially known for his beauty. In the poem Iliad, written by Homer, Ganymede was described as Tros, who was lord of the Trojans, and to Tros in turn there were born three sons unfaulted. Elos and Asarakos and godlike Ganymede, who was the loveliest born of the race of mortals. And therefore the gods caught him away to themselves, to be Zeus' wine pourer. For the sake of his beauty, so he might be among the immortals. When Zeus was watching over mankind, he saw young Ganymede tending sheep. The god got captivated by the beauty of this young man, and he had the perfect excuse to bring him to Mount Olympus, because all the gods were in search for a cupbearer. Zeus ordered his eagle to abduct Ganymede and to bring him to Mount Olympus. As for some stories, Zeus himself turned into an eagle and abducted him. All the gods marveled the beauty of the young mortal, and soon he became a favorite of gods. Ganymede was offered immortality and the noble position of being the cupbearer of gods. As the philosopher Xenophon of Athens points out, granting immortality to Ganymede by Zeus itself could be considered significant, because Zeus did not grant any of his lovers immortality until Ganymede. Ganymede's parents mourned for the loss of their beautiful son. So Zeus compensated the king of Tros by the gift of fine horses, the same that carry the immortals. He made Hermes, the messenger god, to deliver the horses and the news that Ganymede is now the cupbearer of the gods. Tros and his wife were consoled after hearing that their son is now immortal and would be the cupbearer for the gods, a position which is considered noble and distinct. Zeus also created the constellation Aquarius, which has the meaning water carrier or cup carrier, adjacent to Aquila, the constellation which has the shape of an eagle. So every time the king and queen look at the night sky, they would be reminded that their son is among the gods. In the Homeric hymn it is written, Verily wise Zeus carried off golden-haired Ganymede because of his beauty, to be amongst the deathless ones, and pour drink for the gods in the house of Zeus. A wonder to see, honored by all the immortals as he draws the red nectar from the golden bowl. But grief that could not be soothed filled the heart of Tros. For he knew not whither the heaven-sent whirlwind had caught up his dear son, so that he mourned him always, unceasingly. Until Zeus pitied him, and gave him high-stepping horses such as carry the immortals as recompense for his son. These he gave him as a gift. And at the command of Zeus, the guide, Hermes, told him all, and how his son would be deathless and unaging, even as the gods. So when Tros heard these tidings from Zeus, 
he no longer kept mourning, but rejoiced in his heart and rode joyfully with his storm-footed horses. Not only Zeus, but other gods as well, adored the new beautiful cupbearer. There is also a story of Eros cheating when playing a game with Ganymede. This angered Ganymede, and surprisingly, Aphrodite did not side with her beloved son, but Ganymede, and scolded her son for cheating. Some stories say Ganymede was free from Hera's wrath for some time, mainly because he was a man, and Zeus was not known to be involved with men. But as time passed by, Hera noticed Zeus tend to spend extended hours with the young boy. And so Hera's infamous jealousy was turned toward the Trojan prince. Zeus quickly placed Ganymede in the sky as the constellation Aquarius to protect him from the fury of his wife. As for these stories, Hera sided with Greece in the Trojan War, not just because of Paris's judgment, but because of her jealousy towards Ganymede, and Troy was his home. When Troy fell, Zeus has covered the city from clouds, so Ganymede wouldn't witness his father's beloved kingdom in flames. The Greek epic poet Quintus Smyrnius writes in the fall of Troy, now had the Argives burst the gates, had breached the walls of Troy, for boundless was their might. But Ganymede saw from heaven and cried, anguished with fear for his own fatherland. O father Zeus, if of thy seed I am, if at thine best I left far famous Troy for immortality with deathless gods. O oh, hear me now, whose soul is anguish thrilled. I cannot bear to see my father's town in flames. My kindred in disastrous strife perishing. Bitterer sorrow is there none. O oh, if thine heart is fixed to do this thing. Let me be far hence. Less shall be my grief if I behold it not with these mine eyes. That is the depth of horror, and of shame to see one's country wrecked by hands of foes. With groans and tears so pleaded Ganymede. Then Zeus himself, with one vast pall of cloud veiled all the city of Priam world-renowned. And all the murderous fight was drowned in mist, and like a vanished phantom, was the wall in vapors heavy hung no eye could pierce. And all around crashed thunders, lightning flamed from heaven. Then left they, the Greeks, that far famous town, and turned from war, in awe of Zeus threatening. It is clear that Ganymede was favored by Zeus than any other lover he had. The story was a model for the Greek social custom of paederastia, which means the romantic relationship between an adult male and an adolescent male. The tradition was widely accepted by ancient Greeks because they saw marriage as just a way to fulfill family obligations and to produce children, and not as a close bond because they were often arranged by elders. Paderastia was the way to find a more fulfilling relationship. Let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video and would very much appreciate if you could help out the channel by subscribing and by being a Patreon. A big thank you to my Patreon and subscribers for your continuous support. I hope to see you again in another story to tell.